talking about origin and insertions of all the different muscles of the forearm. So, this is where we left off. Biceps is the long head, goes from the supraglenoid tuberosity via the scapula, and then it runs within the joint capsule, and then, like I said, into the intratubicular groove or the bicipital groove, and then it goes into the corticoid, or the short heads off the corticoid process, right, and then the insertion is on the radial tuberosity. So it does flexion, and then it also supinates. And then the other flexor is going to be the brachialis and the brachioradialis. So there's the brachialis. Okay, so it's origin on the anterior part of the distal humerus. That's going to be this one right here. So it sits underneath the biceps. And then again, it also goes into the cortical process of the ulna. Okay, so then the biceps goes into the radius, and the brachialis goes into the ulna. And then that's going to be also one of the major elbow flexors. And then muscles that cross the elbow, you have the brachioradialis. And that's this one here. When you get into the, uh, the forearm, I'll get that one here. And here you have the brachioradialis. It comes up a little bit higher on the on the uh, ulna, I mean on the humerus. And then that's going to go across into here from the stylic process of the radius. And that's going to be this, this muscle right here. If you resist flexion like that, it's the one that pops up on the top. And then that's going to be, that's going to help with elbow flexion. And then depending on what position your forearm is, it's either going to be pronation or supination. If it's like this, it's going to pull it up. Basically, it brings it up into this position. So if, it, if your arm is pronated, it's going to pull it up this way. If it's supinated, it's going to bring it up to this position. And then the triceps is going to have three heads. We have the long head, which is the infraglenoid tuberosity of the scapula. 
And then the lateral head is going to be the posterior shaft of the humerus. So this would be the long head here. And then the lateral head, then the medial head's underneath. It comes off of the surface of the uh, humerus. And then they all have a common insertion into the lacrimal. So the tricep is pretty much the only main muscle on the back side of the upper arm, and that's going to do extension. And then there's also the aconeus muscle. Like I said, it's a small muscle that does help a little bit in extension. And that's on the lateral epicondyle of the humerus, and then it goes into the lepronyx. So it's just a short muscle that's just right in this area here. So now we have muscles that cross the elbow. All right, it's divided into two main groups. You have the anterior muscles, and what, what's the action of those muscles? Maybe? So then the ones on the posterior side, going to be extension. Okay. And they all, most of them are going to have a common, like on the flexors, there's a common origin point on the medial epicondyle. And then the extensors, the common origin is going to be the lateral epicondyle. So there's some variation, like I said, you have the brachioradialis comes up a little bit higher on the humerus. And then as we go down, there's a couple other muscles, but most of them are going to be a common origin point on the lateral epicondyle. Then you're going to get into some of the deeper muscles that are more in the mid part of the forearm, and those are going to be deeper, and they're not going to come off of that common origin point. They're going to come off either the radius or the ulna or the interosseous membrane. Of these forearm muscles, there's going to be some that only go to the ribs or the, the metacarpals, and those are just going to be act, acting on the wrist. And then there's some that go farther that actually move the digits. And then because you can flex your arm, flex your fingers at different points, there's going to be some muscles that go to this point here, and some that go all the way. Do this, you know, that's going to be a muscle that attaches to the distal phalanges. And then if you're doing if you're flexing here, there's muscles that attach onto the the middle part. So again, most of the anterior muscles are going to be flexors, most of the posterior muscles are going to be extensors. And then there's something that's called the, the flexor retinaculum and extensor retinaculum. What that is, is it's a, a connective tissue that's kind of like a band, it's like a wristwatch kind of thing. It's got those tendons, because when you come back like this, if there was nothing there, and those tendons would just spring up like this. So you have something that goes across there that stabilizes the tendons at the wrist, either on the extensor side and then also on the flexor side. Then you have some other muscles that have specialized functions like the pronator muscles. So you have the pronator quadratus down at the wrist part here, just a band of muscle that pulls down over like that. And then you have the pronator teres, which is in this area here that pronates like that. So this would be the pronator teres right here. And then also you can have the supinator, we'll have that, that'll, more details of that will be in the notes later. You have the supinator that comes around the side like this that pulls up like that. Okay. So we're going to be going over these muscles a bunch of times. So you know we'll go over it, looking at it, the pictures on here, up on the slides, and then also we'll do palpation and muscle testing and stuff like that. So we're going to keep going over the same muscles. So if you don't get it right the first time, don't worry about it.